because we're studying pathophysiology or not only gut function but gut dysfunction, we've been doing our research in animal models and also in human tissue. And some of uh, the exciting work that we've done with the human tissue has involved ir tissue from individuals with irritable bowel syndrome. We've been uh, looking at serotonin signaling in the mucosa of the gut. So we all think of serotonin as a brain neurotransmitter, but 95% of the serotonin in our body is actually in our GI tract, and that's where it was first discovered. So it's in small cells that are in the lining of the gut, these cells sense what's going on in the lumen and they secrete serotonin out into the wall of the gut where it can activate nerves that are nearby. That serotonin, once it activates receptors on these nerves and, and stimulates responses, we have to get rid of it. Anytime, anytime we use a signaling molecule in our body, after it signals, we have to get rid of it. And the way we get rid of serotonin is by uptake into cells uh, using a, a protein called the serotonin reuptake transporter. And this is the same protein that takes up serotonin in our brain for serotonin signaling. And this is the target of SSRIs, or serotonin selective reuptake inhibitors. So this molecule is on every epithelial cell in the lining of our gut. So we have a huge sponge for removing serotonin uh, once it's released. And the reason I'm talking about this molecule called CERT so much is that it's changing in the intestines of individuals with inflammation and also in individuals with irritable bowel syndrome. So we have uh, looked at, in, at uh, tissue samples, rectal biopsies from individuals with diarrhea predominant IBS and also constipation predominant IBS as well as ulcerative colitis. And what we have found is that the RNA for producing this molecule is decreased in all three of these populations, and also immunary activity for the protein is decreased. So what, we're, what we think is happening is we're losing our sponge for serotonin uh, in IBS and also in inflammation, and so once serotonin's released, it's sitting around longer, so it can overstimulate reflexes, and also it might desensitize receptors. If a receptor is exposed to a molecule too long, then it stops responding to that molecule. And these, cha these shifts in serotonin signaling could underlie changes in gut function. Now, I'll be honest about it. At this point, we just have this observation where these things are changing, and we don't understand the cause and effect relationship of these changes. So in other words, we don't understand whether changes in gut function are leading to compensatory changes in serotonin signaling or if changes in serotonin signaling are resulting in altered gut function. We know, though, that if you knock out this serotonin transporter in mice, they behave like individuals who have IBS with alternating symptoms. The mice have diarrhea alternating with periods of constipation. We also know that uh, Gut dysfunction is the major uh, side effect of SSRIs, and we also know that if we give animals high doses of SSRIs, they get altered gut function. So we know that by changing serotonin transporter function in the gut, we can result in symptoms like those of, of IBS. So this, this might be important. 